Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you're welcome once again to another session of the YM. technical webinar series. Financing for our local industry, in fact, our high risk project has always been a challenge. And I, I could see the main reason has been access to a limited uh, number of funding sources. Basically it's just the banks and then one or two investment houses. It's always been a challenge pre-COVID, and I believe it's going to be a serious challenge post-COVID. Today, we are privileged to have uh, Mr. Abdulaziz Sander. He's a minerals engineer, a BSc minerals engineering at, from UMAT, and also an MBA in finance. I say privilege in that um, for about a decade and a half, this is what he's been doing, actually. He's been assisting clients in sourcing local funds for their construction and high-risk mining businesses. I wouldn't want to waste time so much. He's currently the head commercial bank and society general. Sana is going to um, <laughs> take us through what's happening in the current sphere of the business, what we had to, to expect. Um, post-COVID. We've already wasted a bit of time already. We're hoping to start at 1.15, but then I'll move on straight to Sander, that he just takes us through to quickly to a bit of the happiness in the industry. As is if you are available. Good afternoon to the house. Um, so Mr. President, uh, uh, give me the honors. Uh, he's told you who I am. Um, so I've been doing this for uh, almost 14 years. Um, with the, I, I've been with four different banks, three of them as um, in charge of uh, mining relations, relationships onto uh, my current position as a, a head of commercial. Um, let me take you through uh, my, pre uh, my presentation and then so the outline of my of the presentation of my presentation today would uh, of course uh, i would have to touch on the impact Sana, of so, sorry. on the financial you, you, sector hello Sandra. You, you may want to share your um, screen if you i can hello sir yeah we, we can would you please um, share the screen for us to Can I please share your screen? Philosophy, I can't hear you. Thank you for my screen. And we not seeing your screen. If you may want to, you possibly share it for us, sir. Hello. Yes, yeah, Anna. Can you please share your screen, sir? I'm sharing, I'm sharing it. All right, sir. Uh, can you see my screen now? Uh, not from here, no. Uh... Can you see it now? It says only host can share, please.
Hello, can you see my screen now? Hello? Yes, I go, go ahead, it's, it's on now. Okay, thank you so much. The internet is, um, I mean, acting up. Sorry about the delays. So I'm gonna go straight to the outline of my presentation. Um, I, I, this, this presentation will not be perfect if I don't talk about the impact of COVID on the financial sector. Um, there, there have been some actions locally and globally to um, ameliorate the impact of the COVID. So I'm going to speak to that, just some few points on what has been done so far and what we envisage from what has been done. Uh, I'll touch on some uh, mining sector performance in the past year. Uh, I mean, of course, with COVID. Um, then I'll come to the main topic, local financing of mining operations, how we have done it in Ghana. I'm going to touch on uh, a bit of uh, um, alternative financing for the direct mining companies. And then I'll take one product which is uh, uh, quite new in, in town for um, local contractors or um, uh, direct uh, mine service contractors for uh, our major mines. And then speak about some industry risk and then the critical success factors from the challenges I have uh, mentioned was discussed. I've left the conclusion open for discussions in relating to uh, my presentation this afternoon. So I'll go straight to the point. Um, COVID, COVID was devastating. Uh, we have, the world had never seen anything like this before. Um, for a pandemic in time, we had never seen anything like that before. Um, some economics were shut down twice. In Ghana, we're lucky enough, we only went off, I think, I think once, but uh, sectorially, uh, some sectors of the economy had to, be, had to go off completely. It threw millions out of work. Uh, businesses have to be shut down. Some aspect of businesses have not even opened up to today. Uh, I know the hotel industry in Ghana haven't opened fully. Uh, the restaurant industry suffered badly. The global financial system, I mean, has emerged because of some uh, actions taken by um, uh, the central bank or actions taken by uh, the, the economies all around the world. Globally, um, the large scale and rapid declines in all sectors leading, leading to record stimulus uh, packages. Um, the tourism industry in, in a country like Egypt suffered losses up to $2.6 billion. That was an example of the, the rapid declines in, in, in a sector. Yeah, Egypt, um, the, the tourism industry in Egypt is their number one earner. So if it suffered 2.6 billion, you should know the effect on their economy. Equity markets declined rapidly across the world uh, as much as 30%. Supply chain disruptions all around the world. China being one of the largest exporters, um, there was 78% reduction in, in supply chain to other countries. Um, I mean, it wasn't all negative, but it was more negative. Online shopping, remote education, telemedicine saw some dramatic surges. Um, I mean, by virtue of the Zoom we're using now, Zoom added $93 billion to its market capitalization. Facebook added 125 billion, Microsoft added 393 billion. So the top 25 companies, it was positive for them. Um, they added close to $5.8 trillion to their market capitalization. So it wasn't all doom and gloom, but the, 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 number, the number that suffered the doom and gloom was a higher percentage. Uh, FinTech firms took over the role of banks because banks could not ordinarily open and to conduct business because of the pandemic. Uh, we had to do disbursement and then uh, transfer of funds through by the use of FinTech. So PayPal and Shopify did that uh, in, in countries like China and some parts of the world. Um, locally, I mean, a lot of banks faced uh, greater credit losses than their balance sheets could hold. I mean, uh, I can tell you of a major national asset 
in Ghana, uh, whose financing of phase two was completed just weeks before the pandemic started. And imagine if uh, the, the repayment for this facility was basically from the use of the facility. So imagine a complete shutdown of the facility, what it did. Demand for banking services dropped drastically for, for banks because we wanted to minimize the cost. We closed down a lot of our branches. We reduced the number of hours we work. Saturday banking for some banks has, hasn't been uh, started again. We closed down uh, some branches, like I said, we reduced the number of hours of work. Now banks have become selective in the sector that we're operating. You remember very well at the end of 2019, there was this uh, uh, return, year of return to Ghana, year of return in Ghana. I mean, the numbers, the hotels were filled up, the restaurants made enough money. I mean, come into um, uh, the start of the year and then COVID shows up. I remember very well, there was a transaction I was doing for a hotel industry in the airport area, a boutique hotel in the airport area. It was an expansion to accommodate be, to accommodate more people because of the year of return programs. The transaction got me so good. The transaction, I came to a halt immediately, COVID read its head. So the challenges have been, have been there. Um, and there have been challenges to loan repayment leading to refinancing and restructuring of uh, existing debt. Now, the actions that have been taken to ameliorate the impact of COVID, uh, uh, I mean, locally and globally, um, large scale sectors of, of the economy have been given some funds to jumpstart uh, the, 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 the economy. In America, 1.8 trillion was disbursed as COVID relief to companies just to jumpstart the economy. And this President Biden came and he has also disbursed uh, 1.9 trillion. He went as to giving up even uh, uh, small businesses, uh, loans, forgivable loans, loans they, they, they are not supposed to pay back. I mean, specific uh, uh, sectors of the economy, like the health sector, got about 8.3 billion for vaccine research. $130 billion was also given to hospitals and health industries. You should look at the quantum of money that was disbursed. This was to just jumpstart the economy because of just 12 months of the impact of COVID. So if COVID had a dilapidating effect on the economy. It had a dilapidating effect on our finances too. I mean, tax payments globally were deferred, some rebates were granted, so companies could kick start and then get the economy running, get their economies running. Federal funds, uh, rates for federal funds were lowered up to about 150 basis points, and that is huge. Locally, the central bank lowered monetary policy rates by 150 basis points. This was to uh, ensure that uh, loans by banks to, to get the economy running was, uh, was less costly than it would rather be. There was a reduction in primary reserve requirement from 10% to 8%. This was to put more liquidity into the market. In my subsequent slides, you would see the effect of uh, the reduction of the primary reserve requirement. There was a reduction in prudential limit of capital adequacy ratio from 13.3% to 11%. This was to ensure that you don't categorize uh, uh, a, a small challenge in repayment, give it a category that would show up later as being uh, a bad debt. There was reduction in the provision for OLM category from 10% to 5%. Classifications of loan repayment pass dues for microfinance institutions for up to 30 days as current. So the effect was largely uh, uh, something we don't want to see again. Um, I'll go straight to overview of the mining sector in 2020. There was decrease in global gold demand from uh, 4,386 tons in 2019 to 3,759 tons in 2020. That in, in, in the demand for gold, in the uses of gold, you know, we have uses for investment in jewelry. Amongst all the uses, 
only invest uses for investment went up. And of course, you know, gold is used as a safe haven, and and because of that, the uses for investment was the only one that that went up. But the cumulative effect was a negative, and is the reason why there was a decrease in the demand of gold. The supply of gold also declined, and the contraction in output was primarily due to the downtime in mine production. Ghana and South Africa supply fell by 12.1 percent to 114 tons, and then um, uh, 91 tons in 2020. Ghana's decline was attributed to uh, domestic business and COVID, while uh, South Africa was related to structural problems with the mines. Uh, mining and private sector contribution to the national fiscal pace improved from uh, 4.013 billion in 2019 to 4.172 billion in 2020. This was related to the uh, price of gold. The price of gold did jump, jump up. So it wasn't a, a factor of quantity, it was a factor in relation to the price. Proceeds from export of minerals increased from 6.6 .6, uh, billion in 2019 to 6.9 billion, also a factor of the pricing of gold. Gold export revenue rose uh, from 6.2 billion in 2019 to 6.7 billion in 2020. Now, mineral exports still ex accounts for 48.4% of total exports from Ghana, with gold representing 97.2%, uh, an increase from 93.3%. Um, now, I, I have a story to share before I go to local financing and mining operations. And, but I don't call it a story, I call it a case in point. During my sojourn uh, with the bank, I had just joined one of the banks and in the first week of uh, my joining the bank, I was invited to a discussion in relation to the financing of uh, the supply of Sinai to one of these mines. So I joined the discussion and in the middle of the discussion, uh, one of the directors asked that if Sinai was uh, a, a poisonous or if Sinai was toxic, toxic. Well, I said yes, and that it is used for leaching gold. I also went on to add that um, the, the movement or the supply of cyanide is, is controlled by the EPA and that there was nothing to be afraid of. Well, my explanation and then uh, my answer to the director's question was uh, ended the discussion because he said once uh, cyanide was poisonous and it was going to be moved by road from the port to, um, uh, to the supply point, then um, he found that he, 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 his uh, intimation was that um, it, it wasn't a, a transaction he wanted to do because if the, if, if the material was being transported and then there was an overturn of the vehicle, it meant our money was gone down, had gone down the drain. So that's my first instance. Uh, another instance, I joined another bank in, the, in my course of uh, doing my sojourn. And it was a discussion relating to also a financing of a, uh, a transaction uh, a customer brought. During the discussion, somebody, one of the uh, participants retorted that oh, mining is risky. Why are we doing this? So I, I, asked the, I asked him a question that, well, you say mining is risky. How many banks had collapsed in the 10 year period during the time of the discussion? He didn't give me an answer. And I told him, well, during the same time, I could tell him that no mine had collapsed. So in terms of risk, which one was more riskier? I didn't get an answer to the question I put, but of course, the question I asked was a rhetorical question. I didn't need an answer for it because I knew the answer. Um, we, we discussed that transaction further, but eventually the transaction was declined. I am putting up all these um, cases in point because I want to put across a, a mindset that is with a mindset with financial institutions. Uh, the mindset is that mining is risky and, and all that. There are no riskier uh, businesses around or there are no riskier sectors. It is that um, the financial institutions, even though we have been mining for close to 100 years, do not understand what we do when you say you are mining. I mean, you should have, you should be listening to the radio stations nowadays. Um, I mean, people come up saying, 
we have been mining for a long time. We don't see any effect of the mining. Uh, they, they're taking our money away. You should listen to radio station because of the issue of the Galam uh, 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 Some people even want a total ban on mining. You know, so those are the sentiments around. You shouldn't take it for granted that people understand what, what mining is about. People don't. And that sentiment resonates in the financial institution. Um, so I come to the point uh, for local financing of mining operations and the trends. Um, local financing of mining operations has largely been through debt. Now, the two forms of financing operations. You can either finance through debt or you can finance via equity where you have ownership of what you finance. But being that these um, direct mining companies are companies that are uh, multinational, they have varied source of funding from uh, their, their homes and they have varied source of funding, they have cheaper funds and hence these direct mining companies do not take financing in Ghana. It is the local contractors or the direct uh, mining contractors that seek financing from uh, financing locally. And for the time being, for, for having financed them for some, some time, we have financed them through debt. There hasn't been any equity. And by Bank of Ghana rules, we, we do not, banks do not partake in uh, taking up uh, ownership of companies. We don't, we don't do that. We only give you the funds and then we have terms of payment during uh, at the time when you have to pay us back, you pay us back our funds plus interest uh, for, for the funds we have disbursed to you. So the local contractors rely solely on banks for financing. And this is how we have financed them largely. We have, um, I mean, we've we have done loans. We have, uh, we have done overdrafts. We have, we have done uh, selling accounts. We have, we have done factoring, selling account receivables. We have done um, finance leases, buying equipment and using the equipment as security for the financing. We have uh, uh, VAT monetization is something we have done for the direct mining companies, but. Um, during my during my time as head of mining, uh, the transactions were uh, the VAT monetization transaction uh, did not come through because uh, government had in, in an interminable uh, time for repayment. Government there, there, there wasn't any uh, time in, 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 in there wasn't any certain time that government would repay the funds. So a lot of the transactions that came my way were not completed. So these are basically the ways we have financed, um, we have tried to finance uh, contractors or direct contractors of these uh, um, mining, mining companies. Um, we have also done some contingent liabilities for um, the reclamation uh, guarantees of uh, almost all the mines. You know, the mines are supposed to post reclamation guarantees and Currently, we're supposed to do it locally. Um, so we, 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 we banks put up guarantees for uh, all these uh, reclamation guarantees. And uh, it's been done um, quite interestingly. Now, the challenges with uh, um, financing uh, local, these local contractors has been a bit of a challenge. Um, the reason is that very often, like I, I intimated in my earlier submission, that um, the, the, the industry really does not understand what, um, what mining is all about. And um, like in the two scenarios I created, it's an outright risky area for them, and, and hence um, the transactions they pick up are few and far between. Uh, the reason why banks um, look at transactions like this is one, um, the, the, the source of funding they have is short term. Majority of the local banks here pick up funds from the public. So it is depositors funds that they use. And most of the time, depositors funds are short term in nature. When in, in, in finance terms, when you see short term, they are between um, 12 months. They are short term in nature and hence 
uh, when you come to a bank for financing for more than one year, they find it difficult to want to do that for you. Um, uh, another reason is that uh, most of the time, the, 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 the capacity of the contractor is not something they can, uh, financial institutions can readily ascertain and hence they find issues with doing transactions for these uh, customers. I'll take you straight to another slide to show you how well uh, the various uh, sectors and the distribution of credit for these sectors. You would see that mining is a lonely 2.4% as we speak, because there was a decline in from 2020 to 2021. You can see from the other sectors that um, mining is about the lowest in all of the sectors. It means that for the majority of transactions we do, um, mining does not is, is does not place in 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 what we do. Now I've I've shown another um, graph indicating how um, the sectors have performed in relation to uh, NPLs. NPLs meaning uh, non-performing loans. You will see again also that. Um, I mean, mining is 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 a huge is a is, plays a huge part. Even though it is not it is not the worst, it means that you you have mining doing not doing too well in relation to the 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 the, the lowly uh, percentage it represents amongst the various sectors that we have done uh, that facilities have been granted. <coughs> At the bank, at the, at the bank, uh, we acquisition, exploration, resource estimation, and reserve estimation are areas we think are speculative, and hence we we rarely do business in there. And and of course, um, because of the long pre-production periods from acquisition to production, um, the best. Thing you can do in that area is to use equity rather than any debt find funding for for um, this for for the start of uh, a mine from acquisition exploration resource estimation resource estimation um, mine planning mine development mine operation and all processing are the areas of safety for a lot of the banks and this is where we have we have done business in we have done businesses with like uh, as I explained the area earlier, we have done businesses like um, uh, financing uh, equipment, we have done um, OPEX, I mean, giving out funds, invoice discounting, they have all been done in these areas for uh, local suppliers. I uh, Transaction involving marketing and distribution of gold is, is quite a, a peculiar one. And, and the reason is that and the reason is that we don't have institutions in Ghana that can value gold. We don't have trusted institutions in Ghana that can value gold and give you the true value at any particular time. And it's the reason uh, financial institutions don't go into financing gold purchase and gold exports. We see a mine investment climate as very risky because it has a long pre-production period. The capital required is high. The commodity pricing is cyclical and the resource is non-renewable. These features of a mine investment climate would give any financier fears to want to delve in. High capital requirements in recent times, I have seen a term sheet of a $350 million for a mine that is just about to start in Ghana. These are the kind of funding you get or the funding requests you get for, uh, for the start of a mine. And these kind of funds are not funds you can get locally. 
and hence you have to find a cheaper source from the outside market. Now, like I explained earlier, alternative financing, uh, I, I chose alternative financing for direct mining companies because COVID has, has, has had a great impact on various sectors of the economy. Um, and hence, financiers are looking for areas of safety. They're not looking for areas that, are, that they do not understand, or they're not looking for areas that are a bit risky. They're looking for areas where they can finance and then uh, in, in, in less than a month, in less than a, a, a year, they are out. So traditional source of financing are drying out for the mining sector. And hence the mining sector must seek alternative ways of financing um, uh, the, their capex. Now, financiers are seeking competitive sector as the cyclic nature of mining seem very unattractive. Now, in terms of alternative financing, we'll notice that over a period we have seen $8 trillion in total assets under management. However, like I projected locally, where we have mining being the lowly area where banks have disbursed funds to, in alternative financing, mining also happens to be one of the areas where a lot of funds haven't been doled out to. Now, in terms of CAPEX, McKinsey and company have projected that mining will require $900 billion over the next 10 years for capital expansion. However, as we speak today, only 1% of total assets under management is in mining. And hence, uh, there's a lot more um, financing required for mining that should come up. Now, alternative financing for mining represents just 10 to 15 billion. And that is woefully inadequate, suggesting that there's a potential to raise more. I'm gonna describe for you just three ways of raising financing. And this is specifically to uh, the direct mining companies. And this is how they can raise funds rather than rely on the traditional method of uh, raising funds. Um, I mean, you could sell part of your future production uh, to raise money immediately. I mean, the advantages are that when you do that, there are no cash commitment, just a percentage of your future production. So you raise money today, and then when eventually when production starts, it is some part of it is used in making payment for. Now, for, for an alternative source of financing like that, it is quicker because you don't have to go through the various meal like a local, like a financier will go through. The risk is shared between you and the lender because it is the quantity of produce that you share with the lender. And then there are no restrictions to what you use your cash for. There are financiers or financial institutions or banks that would specifically prohibit you from using the funding that is provided to you for some specific purpose. But in terms of uh, net smelter sales, there are no restrictions. Now, another form of alternative financing is net profit interest. You could purchase a percentage of mine profit in return for an upward payment, typically uh, after capital cost has been paid. And it has similar advantages like uh, the net streaming sales. Asset monetization, tolling, or JVs. This has uh, the sale of a portion of the value of an existing asset in exchange for uh, a revenue stream. We have seen that views uh, in in uh, in various forms in 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 in, in a form like a, a sale and lease back, where you purchase an asset, um, a financier comes in, picks. Usually, the assets you purchase are, are supposed to be new. The financier comes in, picks up the assets, and then uh, goes out money, and then you rent back the asset and you pay back in in in, in a form of amortization, like a monthly payment sort of. This gives uh, funds, uh, brings up funds upfront that can be used for your your capex needs as a as a direct mining company. Now, in in terms of the local contractors. Um, 
apart from the various financing that we uh, I initially mentioned, like giving our term loans, invoice discounting, overdrafts that we have we, we grant to to for their various needs. Uh, this is a new product on the market that has been introduced that can be used. It is also under an alternative form of financing uh, that can be used and it's, called, it's factoring. It's, it, 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 it might not be entirely new, but it is new to the Ghanaian public. Now, what factoring does is that it gives you a short-term working cap capital solution that allows your company to uh, assign its receivables to the bank and benefit from uh, uh, financing based on assigned account receivables. If you do business with a, 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 a giant mining company and your, you submit your invoices for payment, I mean, whilst the invoices go through the due diligence process, like you know, it takes a bit of time before the payment is made. Whilst you wait for the payment to be made for you to carry on doing your, your job because the funds are limited, factoring provides that this uh, invoice you have submitted is submitted to a bank and then a percentage up to 80% or 90% of the value of that invoice is paid to you. The reason why that amount is paid to you because, is because uh, the portion that is left, the portion that is left is, is, it is from that portion that the fees for that transaction is taken up. Now, in doing so, you outsource collection of your account receivables and you get protection from data risk of non-payment because um, the transaction is secured by a credit insurance. It's secured by a credit insurance. Um, for, for factoring, um, the payments are up to, um, like I said, 90%. You get cash faster. For, from a product like that, you benefit from suppliers that this can based on immediate cash from the sales. Once your invoices are submitted, you benefit from cash. The financing you get is linked to your turnover. It's not linked to a classic, it's, it's not like a, a short-term loan where uh, an amount is determined by, by uh, a would-be financier. You avoid insolvency and default tricks on the on 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 the on the direct mining companies. Um, you have Im improved credit management and collection procedure. You eliminate the cost of uh, recovering debts, and your your you increase uh, the fi your financials. You, you you show a better picture in your financials because um, your level of receivables are low, and you consistently have cash showing in your financials. Now, I'm just gonna take you through shortly how the factoring product works. You deliver goods and services via document. You deliver the, the documents to the financier. The financier pays a percentage of it. Um, a transfer is made eventually on the due date by, by uh, the company that you're, you're doing business with. And then when the payment is made, a portion, the portion that is left after the commission is taken out is paid back to you. So this is a classic way of financing uh, the, company, the, the companies we have locally. Like I explained, for alternative financing, uh, the net streaming sales uh, and, and all those other ones are related to the direct mining companies. Factoring is a classic product for uh, our local contractors. Now, factoring has similarities like invoice discounting. However, the difference is that in terms of factoring, you don't need to secure factoring with a, a collateral, which is basically an issue that raises its head every other time in, 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 our, in, our, uh, in financing uh, local, local mines. Uh, and it's it, it's a tall order because uh, imagine you have a contract of uh, uh, a fifty million dollar uh, contract and you are asked to secure it. I don't know what kind of security you can present that would match um, the, the the required amount you're you're seeking. 
I'll, I'll go straight on to the challenges we have noticed with local financing. As explained in the two scenarios I started with, there has been largely a misunderstanding of the sector, despite the numerous years of having um, done mining in Ghana. I mean, you should listen to the various discussions on the radio stations. I, I, I don't mean to say that the radio stations are, uh, are an epitome of knowledge when it comes to mining. However, uh, the knowledge shared or the information passed is very much not like what it has to be. And that knowledge is what you find with the banks. There's a green view of the sector despite its numerous advantages. In the sense that, I mean, there are several, there are several uh, sectors that uh, remain risky. However, <laughs> there's a thinking that mining is so dangerous, it is not for uh, it is not for financiers to partake in, and is the reason a lot of banks have shied away from locally. There is a disconnect between the industry, the mining industry, and the financial service sector. I mean, if you look at the other sectors, they said there, are, there have been several collaborations between the other sectors and mine and 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 and, and, the, and the banks or the financial institutions per se. There are various programs where um, this, I'll give an example. Uh, the manufacturing sector would invite various banks to come and speak to their, uh, their, their suppliers. I mean, there have been several forums where there's a collaboration uh, to the extent that these manufacturing sectors, these manufacturing giants, they, they, they become part and parcel of negotiations for any financing that their suppliers require. The reason is that they think they have a better pricing power and can help in the negotiation process. But for, uh, we have seen that we have currency mismatch uh, challenges too. But for the central bank's insistence that one should do business in Ghana, the mode of payment should be CD. We have seen requests from uh, local uh, uh, local contractors where, when they come to you, uh, because the contract is dollarized, they also want funding in dollar because they think that it is cheaper. Dollar accessing financing in dollar is cheaper. However, the challenge is that very often these mining companies, I mean, apart from their direct. Um, the, the direct contractors, mining companies do, would 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 pay in 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 a, in in, a, in CD, and hence um, there's a mismatch of the currency. I mean, you have the contract in 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 dollars. However, they pay you at a CD, at a at, at a rate in CD on the day of payment, equivalent on the day of payment. Sourcing for dollar is another is another disadvantage. And, and hence it becomes it becomes a big challenge. Now, because of the funding sources locally, um, there's a bit of mismatch because most of we, we, we most of the funding we receive from local depositors are short-term funds. However, for projects being long-term in nature, there's a, a mismatch of the currency. There's a mismatch of the funding source. Um, majority of banks do not go outside to look for long-term funds and hence cannot do financing in uh, mine, cannot do financing related to mining. Single obligor limitations. When I, I, I mentioned earlier that I saw a term sheet of about $350 million for a mine that is about to start in Ghana. That mine does not have any local participation in it. The reason is because of, uh, uh, of, of the capital that is available with local banks. I mean, I don't know how much you would dole out for a transaction of $350 million in Ghana. I don't know how what participation in I remember that 16 banks had to syndicate for the construction of um, uh, MTN's uh, head office. I mean, 
So we are tied up and we're asked to do just 25% of the net worth of, 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 of net worth of banks. And, and hence the, the, there's a bit of a limitation. If you have a, um, a contract that is huge, you'd have to look for funding outside the country. And that is also a challenge. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have challenges with securitization of this uh, of, of transactions. When you have a big transaction, I mean, looking for security for that transaction becomes a headache. There, there's an absence of uh, a secondary market for the collaterals we take. Um, if you if if you use ADTs or you buy machines to use as collaterals in, in, in a typical financing like uh, a finance lease transaction and they happen to uh, and there are issues with that transaction and you happen to go for this um, you happen to pick up these machines you don't have a secondary market to sell it off in other jurisdictions all these equipment can be sold off and the, the financier or the banker um, get to get their funds back and then I mean, there's a restructure of the transaction and then you, you I mean, there's everybody has the peace of mind, but we don't have a secondary market locally and it's a bit of a challenge. Now, a lot of the times we categorize mining equipment as specialized machines. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. So there was a debate, <laughs> there was a debate where I, 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 I told somebody that, well, look, the stethoscope is 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 more specialized than the dump truck because the dump truck has several uses, whereas the stethoscope is can only be used in the hospital setting. You cannot use the stethoscope outside the hospital. But then for the dump trucks, whilst you use it in mining, you can use it in construction application. You can use it for even sometimes the movement of goods, even though that's not what it's supposed to be used for. So. I mean, the categorization of mining machines as very specialized is also one of the challenge. Cost of financing, I mean, not until recently where um, the Ghana reference rate was instituted, lending rates were as high as 28%. I mean, if you add all the fees and commissions that come with it, you have an APR of about 32 percent. I mean, imagine you're paying this amount. I mean, what are the margins on transactions that you have to pay 32 percent out of as as fees for 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 to a bank? And hence, it's also a bit of a challenge. Now, somebody would ask that, well, we could use we, we could do a transaction where you can use gold as security because. I mean, that's so So you can uh, advance some funds to a would-be lender. That is a bit of a challenge. Unlike in other jurisdictions where you could export gold to, you could hedge, like, I mean, I, mean, I know of a, um, a refinery in Switzerland by name Metalo. And because of their pedigree, I mean, a lot of transactions have gone on where Metalo has received gold um, for hedging purposes and have they themselves go without funds. Metalaw has, uh, can, can give you true value of gold at any point in time. And because it's a trusted source, uh, a lot of financiers rely on them to give them, uh, to give them value. We, 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 we don't seem to have uh, a thing like that around locally. And it's the reason why a lot of banks shy away from doing the last end, which is the marketing of the commodity that is produced. Um, well, the, the issue is that we have, we have seen some uh, refineries spring up, but do they have the certification? Are they independent refineries who can certify the true value of gold and, can, and, and, and as such, the, the gold can be used as security for a facility? Well, it, it is an issue that will be dealt with uh, late, later. Um, recent implementation of KYC regulations have uh, categorized mining as a very high risk. And for, for that categorization, the kind of documentation you need, the kind of explanations that go into any transaction, it, 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 it's like a put off for a lot of financiers. The risk we see 
in relation to mining is the reason why funding for that sector is as a, at a lowly 2.4% uh, at the end of the first quarter. I mean, financiers locally uh, tend to like other sectors than mining. And is the reason, and the reason being that we, we, we think that um, the cash flows for even the direct mining companies is indeterminable because uh, there's ever increasing cost of operations. I mean, because it's linked to uh, the pr price of gold, it's indeterminable. Once the price goes up, then there are fluctuations to uh, revenues for a lot of the mining companies, and it translates into payments to local contractors. Um, risk of funds diversion for these local contractors because um, they, they probably would have challenges with uh, uh, with, with payments from the direct mining companies because of cash flow reasons. We have seen uh, political reasons being assigned in recent times, even to the, the small scale sector. I mean, uh, these are all uh, risks that give uh, a, a would be financier or, the, or that, that gives uh, uh, a, a financial reasons not to want to do business in a sector like mining. We've seen uh, issues of performance have, have come up. And I'll, I'll, I'm gonna explain later why performance is really an issue because we know that most of these uh, contractors for the mining companies are contractors that have been scrutinized that are worth their salt. I mean, before they are chosen. However, for financiers, we find it difficult trusting that these contractors can perform. In, in the past, tax legislation and on, on uncertainties about taxes have been issues in the industry. And uh, I can tell you today that funds for exploration to, um, to a country like Ghana have gone down. We have been beaten by Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast because of the tax regime in Ghana as compared to those other countries. Um, work safety concerns, the harsh re reality of the impact of Galamse. These are issues that uh, uh, are sort of like a put off for financiers. Um, and is the reason why you don't see a lot of financing in the area of mining. Now, in order to succeed from where we have come from, um there has to be a lot of interactions or the frequency of interactions between the financial sector and the mining sector has to see a significant increase i mean we should have an open door policy with each other in the sense that there, there has to be a lot of discussions around especially with with for, for the local contractors i mean um a visit to understudy what 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 miners do uh, sh 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 should should be encouraged such that financing doesn't become uh, a, 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 a peer a peer kind of a, a thing for, for for the local banks. We I think also that we need to involve um, financiers at the negotiation stage of. Of any contract with any 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 contractor, when we do that, um, the pricing power of these big uh, direct mining companies come to play, because I can tell you for for uh, uh, for factoring, um, the pricing power of the direct mining companies is what is used, what is applied to um, uh, the local contractors. So if the direct mining company will not take a rate of like 15% from a financier, the local contractor benefits from that pricing power of the, 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 the direct mining company. Um, in 2017, the central bank went on a push to uh, on a push and gave almost all the banks in the country a one year time to increase their minimum capital requirements to up to about 
I think 400 million, from 150 million Ghana cities to 400 million Ghana cities. This has increased the capacity of the banks to do some bit of a transaction, even though I, I for me, I think it's, it's even, it's, it's still lowly. And uh, for this reason, uh, a lot a lot more banks, I mean, from 2018 to date, um, um, banks have increased their net worth and, and hence can do, um, transactions, I mean, can do bigger ticket transactions and hence uh, a lot of the transactions involved with, uh, in, in, with that are do allow to direct mining companies should be directed at uh, uh, local contractors because you, you can access, you can get access to financing from some banks. Uh, I mean, the banks that have bigger capital will, will do more of that transactions. I, I can tell you of a uh, uh, an EPA guarantee that was issued recently that had six local banks partaking in it. So, uh, I mean, if the transaction seemed too big for one particular bank, I think the banks can syndicate. And it, it, syndication happens a lot outside outside uh, Ghana. I mean, Dangote is uh, putting up that uh, giant infrastructure is putting up had a lot of Nigerian banks putting their heads together because once that is done, the, the funds remain, remain in Nigeria and it helps boost the economy of Nigeria. I, I think that we should leverage on the capital that these local banks have and do a lot more transactions locally. Um, somebody will ask, well, if all these advantages, if we do all this and we don't see, we still don't see the effect, what, what, what else can be done? now? Uh, on the part of um, on the part of the local contractor, I, 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 there, there are times when we see a lot of challenges with um, convincing banks how you're going to do it. And by way of convincing banks, I, I um, my my explanation would be sometimes they don't put your books right. I mean. Yeah, 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 because of the challenges with repayment of loans from other other places, they present a very poor picture of themselves when they are applying for um, when they are applying to other banks for facilities. And these are some of the reasons why um, a lot more financiers will not want to do business in in, in sector like this. I mean, the reason I give doesn't it permits to a lot more sectors than just in relation to mining. However, we've seen that a lot with um, um, doing business in, 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 in our particular sector. I, I, I come to this conclusion that I think the interactions, the interactions we, we haven't had in the past, even though we have done a lot more business we have done mining for a longer period than in most of the sectors is the reason why local there are a lot of challenges with local funding even though there are other other reasons for uh, the other reasons why the, the funding hasn't been as high as it should be as compared to other sectors i've enumerated some challenges but the interactions we have been had to give confidence that uh, the sector is not as risky as it as it seems, and and that the other challenges are some the other challenges are enumerated are surmountable or can be mitigated, and and hence uh, local financing for mining operations should should not be a challenge, and that should be seen as a win-win situation for any financier and any contractor that that wants financing for any project that uh, they, they have won or that they want to complete. Um, so I'll end my presentation here for questions from the audience uh, on any one of the issues I've raised or any one of the uh, comments I've made during my